defrost a prey item, start off by half filling a small plastic container with cool water from a tap and then topping it up the rest of the way with boiling water from a kettle. Basically, you just want to use warm water so that you can thaw out the prey item as rapidly as possible, but you don't want to get it too hot because you don't want to cook it. Usually, you'll see people dumping the prey items straight into the water and calling it a day. But there is some evidence to suggest that this can result in the loss of some water-soluble vitamins from the food, such as the B vitamins and vitamin C. A better method then is to put the prey item within some sort of plastic bag, like a Ziploc bag or perhaps a bin bag for larger prey items like rabbits, and then put it into a hot water bath. In this instance, you're still going to warm the prey item up nice and quick, but it won't be in direct contact with the water. Depending on the size of the prey item, it's going to take about 10, 20 or even 30 minutes to defrost, but in any case you can tell that this has happened because if you get a pair of tongs and just squeeze it round the middle, you'll feel it's gone sort of squishy. Now a little bit more on the prey items. In today's video you'll see that I'm feeding my snakes mice, but you shouldn't always do this because variety is essential. After all, in the wild snakes are going to be eating an absolute plethora of different species, so just to feed them one type of animal in captivity is not really going to be meeting up to that expectation. Now there are many reasons why a varied diet is essential, but on a very basic level, you or I wouldn't like to be eating the same thing every day. I mean, one day you might want a nine nugget meal deal with sweet and sour dip and a Fanta, and the next day you might want a nine nugget meal deal with sweet and sour dip and a Diet Coke. A varied diet is a healthy diet. Now what this means for snakes is that alongside the bog standard mice and rats, you can also be offering other prey items such as chicks, quails, quail eggs, gerbils, hamsters, basically any vertebrate prey as long as it is pre-killed. The reason I say that it must be pre-killed is that not only is it cruel to be feeding live vertebrate prey after snakes, it can also end quite badly for the snake itself if the prey decides to fight back. So once the prey item is defrosted, it's time to feed it to the snake. In terms of offering powdered supplements to snakes, I'm as of yet unaware of any scientific studies to either support or go against this practice. However, as we don't know the husbandry of the prey items prior to them being killed, and the variety of prey items offered to captive snakes is likely to be much less than that received by the wild counterparts, it's advisable still to lightly powder the prey items prior to feeding them off. Always make sure that you offer the prey item with tongs so that the snake doesn't come to recognise your hands with feeding time, which can obviously be quite bad because the snake might accidentally strike at your hands thinking that the food at a later date. To this end, you can also try training your snake in some other way to know when food is coming. What I've done with my corn snake, for example, is training to recognise the sound of the feeding tongs clicking together. It seems to be the case that a snake will attack whichever portion of the prey item is actually directly held in the tongs. I don't particularly know why they do this, so I'm not going to guess, but in any case, if you try and pick up a rodent by the tail, then the snake will usually try and strike at that tail portion, which obviously isn't very useful, so it is a lot better to hold it by the neck, and so the snake tends to strike at the body, which is what you want. And to elicit the strike feeding response that you want, just wiggle the prey around a bit and the snake will take care of the rest.
In my personal experience, I've found that young snakes typically don't want to strike at their prey, so what you can do for that, or for any other snake that doesn't really want to strike, you can just leave the prey item down on the ground and the snake will come over and get it in due course. I'm guessing that the reason for this is that in the wild, young snakes are going to be attacking other young animals which are not really apt to fight back and do the snake any harm, so it's just a waste of energy for them to constrict and kill the prey. As an example, even live pinky mice are not really going to do much harm to any snake of any age, but an adult mouse definitely can. Some snakes are just always shy and will absolutely never come out and show themselves, even to drop feed. And for these individuals, I have a slightly different method to get them to eat. What I do is just take the prey item and sort of smear it round the enclosure to create a scent trail and then leave it somewhere at the entrance of one of the hides. Once you leave the room, the snake will pick up on the scent trail and sort of go around its enclosure and eventually sit in the mouth of the hide to take the prey item when you're not there. Creating scent trails is also something that you can do for enrichment purposes, but the whole topic of enrichment is quite in depth and interesting, so I'll address it properly in a future video. Whenever you are drop feeding though, if the food item has not been eaten within about 12 hours, then do just go in there and take it out because you don't want it to go nasty. For especially picky snakes, there are also a couple of different things that you can try to get them eating. The simplest of them all is just warming the prey up slightly with a hairdryer. Now precisely why this works has not yet been fully determined, but simply it does seem to work. As many snakes are crepuscular, it can also help to try feeding at some time that is not the middle of the day and more towards the evening when the snake is already awake and has all of its senses up and ready. Quite a gruesome little trick to getting snakes to feed is something that we call braining, and in this technique, you are literally exposing the brain tissue of the prey item by cutting its head open. Snakes usually eat the prey head first, because in doing so, if the prey has any legs or claws, then they will tend to go down like this, and therefore as the snake is swallowing, the claws won't get stuck into its throat. And I think for this reason, snakes are attracted to brain tissue, and this might be why the technique works, but I don't actually know. If all of those techniques fail to get your snake to feed, then the simplest thing that you can try is just feeding them less. Most people feed their snakes far more than they actually require, and therefore they simply aren't hungry. So for example, my corn snake gets one prey item every three to four weeks, and that is enough for him. But if you do have a snake that you've tried hair dryer in the food, you've tried braining it, you've tried drop feeding, you've tried shaking it about on the end of the tongs, you've tried leaving scent trails, you've tried feeding the snake less, and it still won't eat, then there is probably something else that is the matter, be it illness or some failing in your husbandry. Of course, there are many other tricks for trying to get snakes to feed, but these are honestly a lot more invasive than the ones that I've discussed in today's video, and if you have a healthy snake, you shouldn't have to be invasively making it eat. And now that we've covered all of that stuff, you should have a pretty good idea on how to feed your snake. Hopefully you did find this video entertaining or useful or even both, and because of that you will subscribe to the channel so that you never miss an upload that'll come out within the near future, because I've been J2B Reptiles teaching you how to follow nature's example, and I'll see you all in the next upload. Bye guys! Oh, and do us a favour and let me know what you think about the cabinets down below, because I have painted them black now, so in my opinion it looks rather suave, but let me know what you think. <laughs>